Greed is good. This is the immortal line spoken by Wall Street player Gordon Gecko, played with sinister delight by Michael Douglas. Released in 1987 and directed by Oliver Stone, Wall Street tells the story of Bud Fox, played by Charlie Sheen, a junior stockbroker who dreams of making it big in the ferocious and competitive world of Wall Street, where he seeks guidance from his hero, Gordon Gecko, where Bud gets caught up in the riches and temptations that come from entering the corrupt and dangerous world of Gecko, where Bud must put his dreams and aspirations aside in order to redeem his soul in this thriller of greed and corporate corruption. So today we are going to explore 1980s Wall Street, the decade of yuppies and high flyers, by looking into 10 things that you didn't know about Wall Street the movie. So, let's check it out! Number 1. Wall Street was originally going to be a movie about game shows. After making his war epic, Platoon, director Oliver Stone wanted his next film to be drastically different, as he got out of the trenches of the Vietnam War to reach new heights in cinema. He originally intended his next film to focus on corruption in 1950s game quiz shows, and he hired Project X scriptwriter Stanley Weiser to write a script for the game show Conspiracy movie. However, during the scriptwriting process, Stone's interest shifted from 1950s game shows to modern 1980s Wall Street. After all, the 80s was a decade known for its rich young Wall Street hotshots, whom dominated the stocks and trade. So the project became less about an old issue to a current day one. However, a movie about 1950s game show corruptions was eventually made in 1994 in the Robert Redford directed quiz show. Number 2. Oliver Stone took inspiration from his father. When it came to certain aspects of Wall Street, Oliver Stone took inspiration from his father, Lou Stone, who was actually a stockbroker for a company called Hayden Stone & Co. during the time of the Great Depression, which, as we all know, was a worldwide shocking economic depression that took place during the 30s, in which, thanks to a decline in the world's economy, the glamour and riches of the 1920s turned to poverty and desperation in the 1930s. As for Hayden Stone & Co., the company that Oliver Stone's father, Lou Stone, worked for, well, the company basically dissolved in 1979 and merged into Shearson American Express Company. So given his family history, it would have helped that Oliver Stone would have had an understanding and interest in the stock market. Number 3. Bud Fox's character is based on a religious tale. In Wall Street, the main focus is on Bud Fox, who is financially seduced by the business-savvy Gordon Gecko, where he gets caught up in corruption and eventually must do the right thing and cleanse his soul, despite the repercussions, which in this case is going to jail. Oliver Stone has likened this story arc to the Christian allegory of the Pilgrim's Progress, in which a young boy is led into temptation of wealth but must eventually redeem himself. However, despite the Bud character being based on an old tale, the movie's charismatic villain Gordon Gecko is based on an amalgamation of several real people, one of them being broker Owen Morrissey, who in 1985 got caught up in a controversial trading scandal. Morrissey was also friends with Oliver Stone. As for Gecko's rapid way of talking, Wall Street's co-writer Stanley Weiser took inspiration from the director Oliver Stone himself, after hearing how he talks when he's doing business over the phone. In addition to old tales and modern businessmen, Stone also claimed that Wall Street is also a tale about sharks going on a feeding frenzy. Metaphorically, of course. Number 4. Original Title of the Movie The original screenplay to Wall Street was considerably different to the final film. For example, the movie was originally going to be called Greed which, to be fair, is a fitting title when you think about it. And the Bud character was originally going to be a Jewish broker called Freddie Goldsmith, but Stone made drastic changes to the character, making him the Bud Fox character instead, in order to avoid what he thought could be stereotyping. Interestingly, it was decided to set Wall Street two years before its release, with the movie taking place in 1985, to 
coincide with real stock trading scandals that took place that year. However, the irony of this is the movie references the Challenger space shuttle disaster, where a character jokes that the day the shuttle exploded, Gecko was on the phone selling NASA stock short. The only problem with this is the Challenger disaster took place in 1986, the year after Wall Street is set. Yeah, whoops. Look, to be fair though, no movie is going to be completely free of plot holes and inaccuracies. Number 5. Origin of the Greed is Good Quote The most memorable moment of Wall Street is Gecko's famous speech, where actor Michael Douglas proclaims the now famous words Greed, for lack of a better word, is good. Not only does this defy the movie, but some even claim it defies the 80s, be that the financial politics of the 80s. The line of dialogue is so memorable, it's even listed at number 57 in the American Film Institution Top 100 Movie Quotes. However, as mentioned, Gordon Gecko is somewhat based on a variety of real-life people, and the immortalized Greed is Good speech is no exception, as the line of dialogue is based on a quote made by stock trader Ivan Bosky, who in 1986 gave a speech to the Berkeley School of Business Administration, where in that speech he said, Greed is right. Yep, that real-life quote led to the creation of one of the most memorable lines in cinema. Number 6. Tensions on set In Wall Street, splash actress Daryl Hannah plays Bud's money-driven and conniving girlfriend, Darian Taylor. Yep, Hannah was no longer a kind mermaid pursuing a love of Tom Hanks, but now a greedy villainess pursuing a love of wealth. However, Hannah had real issues with the role. On the account that she couldn't relate to the character's materialistic ideology, as it clashed with her own real-life ideology. During filming, Oliver Stone would try and coax Hannah and help her to understand the mindset of her character, but even he felt that she may have been miscast. Hannah supposedly had such a miserable time making Wall Street, she never even saw the finished film. In which, in my previous episode about Ace Ventura Pet Detective, the same thing happened with Courtney Cox. <laughs> wow, what are the odds? The conflict doesn't end there though, as Blade Runner actress Sean Young played Gecko's wife, Kate Gecko, and Young was apparently vocal in her opinion that Hannah should have been fired and that she should have played the role of Darian Taylor instead. A sentiment that Oliver Stone would actually go on to agree with. However, Young had her own on-set issues, such as turning up on set late and unprepared, and the fact that she had conflict with main star Charlie Sheen. According to Young, the conflict started because Sheen wrote the C-word on a piece of paper and stuck it on her back, with her walking around with it on the set. <laughs> there are even whispers that Sean Young walked off with many of the costumes provided for the movie after filming. But, <laughs> who knows? As for Daryl Hannah, well, I always thought she actually did an okay job in Wall Street. She's alluring, but also quite a nasty piece of work whenever her character needs to be. I mean, after all, who knows, maybe the real-life tension on set enhanced her performance. Number 7. Casting Possibilities Yep, I know how much you guys like them casting possibilities. Back when it came time to casting Wall Street, Stone would have had to have searched for the actors right for the parts. At one stage, Stone was in talks with Tom Cruise to play Bud, but he ultimately went with Charlie Sheen, whom he had previously worked with on Platoon. When it came time to casting the movie's charismatic antagonist Gordon Gecko, the studio wanted Warren Beatty in the part, whereas Stone's personal choice was Richard Gere. However, both actors turned the role down, to which Michael Douglas took on the part which was something of a game changer at the time, as he was most well known for more dashing heroic roles in movies like Romancing the Stone and The Jewel of the Nile, as well as being a movie producer. When it came time to casting Bud's father, Carl Fox, Stone gave Charlie Sheen a choice to either go with Jack Lemmon in the role or his real life father, Martin Sheen. Naturally, he went with his father, Martin, and it must be said that the two have a great father and son dynamic on screen, which I guess goes without saying. Wow, imagine if Charlie Sheen chose Jack Lemmon over his father. That would have made family reunions in the Sheen household a little awkward. Number 8. First movie to feature a mobile phone 
Well, yeah, Wall Street is apparently the very first movie to feature a cell phone. Hence the famous scene where Gecko is on a beach watching the sunset while telling Bud on his phone that he is going to make him rich. The phone wasn't a prop, but a real one of its time, that being the Motorola Dynatac, aka a big heavy brick that could no doubt knock out people who tried to mug you by throwing it at their heads, thus giving them a severe concussion. The phone weighed two pounds and was 13 inches long and was worth over eight grand by today's money, of course. However, I have seen a few online discussions which debate that Wall Street isn't the first movie to feature a mobile phone and that in the 1963 James Bond movie from Russia With Love, Bond uses a phone that was attached to his car. And some people even argue that the communicators in the original 1960s Star Trek series could also be classed as using mobile phone devices pre-Wall Street. However, I think the claim is more first cell phone as we know them. The kind of phone that would evolve into what mobile phones are now. Mobile phones aren't the only influence that Wall Street has had on the real world, as a breed of gecko was discovered and called Gordon Gecko in Indonesia, named after the infamous character Naturally. <laughs> Cute. Number 9. A strike nearly got in the way of filming. Wall Street was filmed entirely around New York City, with a budget of $16 million. However, the shoot was pretty stressful, of which Michael Douglas, who had to have a speech therapist in order to learn Gecko's rapid style of talking, had smoked up to 40 cigarettes a day. Apparently, Oliver Stone approached Douglas in his trailer one time and asked the actor if he was on drugs, as he looks like he's never acted before while shooting the film, which made Douglas push himself harder. And, well, it obviously paid off, as Douglas gave one of the most memorable performances of the decade and paved the way for him to star in more complex layered roles, such as his role as William Foster in Falling Down. However, tensions were about to get a little more intense as a director's guild of America's strike was approaching. So Stone had to really knuckle down to complete the movie before the strike came into effect, which prompted him to work 14 hour long days, which actually led to the filming of Wall Street to be complete five days ahead of schedule. <laughs> Phew. It must also be noted that real life investment banker Kenneth Lipper acted as an advisor for the movie and really helped with the movie's creative balance. Not only that, but he incidentally wrote the novelization to Wall Street too. Hmm, interesting. Number 10, release. Wall Street was released on December the 11th, 1987, and would go on to make $43 million on its $16 million budget, making it a moderate success. The film also got pretty good reviews from critics. Most of the movie's praises were aimed at Michael Douglas, of course, and Charlie Sheen. In fact, many of the cast and crew who worked on Wall Street frequently have people telling them that Wall Street changed their lives and made them want to become a stockbroker. Wall Street also had the distinct honor of being the only movie to ever win both an Academy Award and a Razzie, as Michael Douglas won an award for Best Actor and Daryl Hannah won a Razzie for Worst Actress. However, Wall Street is kind of like a capsule of its time, a decade of riches and excess in the business market. A movie demonstrating the desire to be swimming among the big sharks and the price to be paid for it. Okay guys, well that was my look into Wall Street, the classic movie of greed and temptation with many great memorable performances. If you haven't seen Wall Street and the stock market interests you, then I really highly recommend this movie. I also recommend it if you're a fan of corporate business thrillers. Anyway, I'm Minty, and remember, money never sleeps. Mainly because it's not a sentient being. See ya!